welcome back everyone uh, in this lecture actually we will see some basics of representation theory so i will define all the terminologies that are used uh, in the representation theory in this lecture and then later we will develop uh, sl2 representation theory which will play a very crucial role in the structure theory of semi simple lie algebras so here are uh, some definitions so we will actually work again over complex numbers so all representations are again uh, assumed to be uh, over complex numbers okay so what is a representation so basically a representation is a lie algebra homomorphism from g to glv for some v okay so a representation a yeah. representation of g is a lie algebra homomorphism from g to g l of b okay so here g is given <coughs> lie algebra and we are talking about representation of that and v is vector space over complex numbers again in this uh, lecture we will only actually talk about only finite dimensional uh, representations okay so basically you can say that uh, a representation is a tuple okay v comma v if you want to emphasize both v and uh, the action of g on v okay so this also you can call it a representation so here some of the important uh, things uh, i want to actually emphasize okay what is representation okay if you think about it so your representation of any algebraic object okay so basically you want to act uh, algebraic object on some vector space so that each element of that uh, algebraic object can be represented as some linear operator or matrix with respect to some basis of that uh, vector space okay so in particularly given x so this given x in g this x acts on this capital v so via this phi so what is the meaning of that so phi of x is just a map from v to v that's all it means so which is a linear map okay and if you think about this association x goes to phi of x so this is actually a giving a map from g to glv so this association must preserve the algebraic structure that we are actually dealing with so the algebraic structure on the left side is actually lie algebra structure okay so lie algebra structure is a vector space with some additional properties so that means this x goes to phi x must be first of all linear map and as well as uh, preserving this lie algebra structure so it must be lie algebra homomorphism okay so that is why you demand this phi to be lie algebra homomorphism so that the algebraic structure is preserved on the both side so each x acts on v so in particularly we can talk about x acting on v okay so simply this means okay so we use this shorthand notation either x of v or x v so which actually just uh, uh, denotes what uh, phi of x does on v okay so most of the time we will not actually uh, tell very explicitly what is this phi so this phi will be always hidden okay so then we write x v to denote the action of uh, this x on v okay so it should be understood that so whenever we write x is acting on v so that means we are talking about there is a representation so that is actually kind of plays the role if you are not comfortable with this notation in the beginning better you use phi x of v every time okay that is actually better so now <coughs> there are immediately some uh, important objects that one can uh, see or associate with the representation 
So, suppose phi is a representation uh, from the Lie algebra G2 GLV. So, then there is this kernel. So, this kernel of phi, so which is an ideal inside G. Okay. So, if you take any element of uh, this kernel, so this kernel uh, uh, elements will act trivially on G L of phi. So, as long as the action of G is concerned, uh, so this kernel does not play much role. Okay. So, in particularly modulo the kernel, we have this uh, induced map phi tilde. So, that is map from the G modulo kernel of phi to G L of phi. Okay. So, now we have changed actually the Lie algebra, but it is easy to see that uh, the action of G can be recovered from the action of this G modulo kernel phi. Okay. There is this natural map from, okay. let me draw this diagram. So, you have a map from G to G L of V and then you have a map natural quotient map which we call pi. So, that is from G modulo the kernel phi and uh, using uh, this uh, universal property of this G modulo the kernel, you can actually define a map phi tilde here such that this diagram commutes. Okay. So, I, I would say the action of G like as long as you are only worried about the action of G. So, that actually can be recovered from the action of this G modulo kernel phi. So, that is all I meant to say. So, you say this representation is actually a faithful representation if the kernel phi is 0. Okay. So, phi is said to be faithful okay, if kernel phi is 0. So, that means phi is equivalently phi is injective. So, that means G can be realized as subalgebra of G L of phi. Okay. In this case, G can be realized inside G L of phi. So, this notation just says, so you have an injective map we have an injective map. Okay. So, this is the shorthand notation. So, faithful representations are again very important uh, uh, representations. So, for example, uh, as I actually stated before, Ado's theorem actually guarantees that there is always a faithful representation from G L G to some G L of V. Okay, that means, any finite dimensional Lie algebra can be realized as general linear Lie subalgebra. Okay. So, if time if time is there, I will I will try to prove Ado's theorem or otherwise uh, uh, I will give some uh, notes. So, from there we can you can actually read that uh, theorem. Okay. So, let us see some examples. of Ado's theorem, okay. sorry uh, the representations. So, we already seen that uh, there is this adjoint representation. So, that is the very first example. Okay. So, this adjoint representation which we saw it plays crucial role throughout. So, what is this? This is a map from G to G L G. Okay. So, this is given by x goes to add x. So, the kernel of this adjoint representation is nothing but the center of G. Okay. So, if you take for example, <coughs> G to be linear uh, Lie subalgebra. So, then this inclusion G inside G L of V. So, this inclusion we, we denote it by iota. So, this is actually a natural representation. Okay. So, this using this inclusion, you can see that G naturally act on V. Okay. So, this is also a representation. So, this is you call it natural representation. For example, you can see that SL2C. So, this is sitting inside 
gl to c so naturally okay acts on c2 okay so this representation space so this v is called representation space on which this lie algebra g is acting okay so that is the meaning of this so <coughs> we will actually later see many many interesting uh, uh, representations okay but in this lecture i will just uh, introduce uh, only the terminologies so now actually this uh, same thing uh, giving a map from g to glv can be actually characterized as follows okay so some of the books actually defines the representation as follows okay so what is the meaning of that so you have uh, for example a vector space v you can think your representation as follows okay here is the equivalent version of defining so let us see actually like if you start with the representation what happens uh, some in some sense that's what motivates us to define this so you have v from uh, g to gl of v so then each x in g you have this v x so which is a map from v to v so given v you have this x v which is actually defined to be v x v okay but this association you can think given an element of g and given element of capital v you are associating an element of capital v so the same <coughs> information can be actually encoded as follows so you can define this new map from g cross v to v and if you want you can call it phi tilde okay so what is this phi tilde so this phi tilde actually map x comma v to just this x v okay which is phi x v so then you can write down actually some important properties that are satisfied by uh, this phi tilde okay so i will leave it to you to actually write down so maybe uh, if you actually want to use some other notation maybe you can also use okay this has some x dot v so using this x dot v uh, you can see that this v tilde must satisfies the following properties so here is the first property the these are all called module properties okay so you can take lambda x plus mu y and then if you act it on v then it should be like linearly act so you should get lambda x dot v plus mu y dot v and then what will be the second property the second property is x dot lambda v plus mu w should be equal to lambda x dot v plus mu x w so that means x is acting linearly so here <clears throat> if you take the linear combination act it on v then again it will be linear then what is m3 so this is the lie algebra property so the lie product if you take xy if you act it on v then this should be equal to you first take this like commutator okay x so y acting on v and then okay x acting on y dot v minus y dot x dot v if you take that that should be equal to your bracket x y acting on v and this should be true for all x y in g and then v w in capital v and all lambda mu in complex numbers okay so all these properties are satisfied so all these properties if you spell it out okay these are all satisfied if you start with the representation so if you take this phi is a representation and then if you define a map x v goes to this phi x v you can see that all these properties are satisfied and conversely if you have a map like that okay suppose if we have a sigma from g cross v to v where x v goes to 
okay, again you can denote it by x dot v or sigma of x v whatever way you want to denote. So, then you can actually define phi or sigma tilde whatever okay. okay, we call it sigma bar. So, from g to g l v given by this x goes to this you can call it sigma x from v to v where v goes to this x dot v. So, this way you can define sigma bar and I urge you to check okay, this is again purely checking that uh, the sigma bar is a uh, Lie homomorphism. Okay. So, in both way uh, you can actually go from the representation to this what is this called module okay. and then if you start with this module okay, G module. So, then you can go to the representation. So, G module means it you V is said to be a G module. Okay. So, V is said to be a G module if there exists field, field tilde like this satisfying this condition. Okay. And basically what we saw, so there is a dictionary between representations and G modules. Okay. If you take uh, <coughs> G representations, so that is phi from G to G L of V, maybe you can also denote it by V comma phi. Okay. From this you have one to one correspondence between this and what is called G modules. Okay. So, this is actually a map from G cross V to V satisfying this is a Lie algebra homosum satisfying the conditions M 1 to So, this correspondence is very clear. Okay. So, that is what we just saw. So, uh, if you are seeing this for first time, okay, if you have not done any model theory in your algebra course, I urge you to check this correspondence very explicitly. Basically, all you need to do is just check the map from phi to phi tilde. So, that actually satisfies these conditions and from sigma to sigma bar that is also satisfying the conditions that is given here. Because of this dictionary between G representations and G modules, we actually kind of uh, use modules and representations more or less in a synonym way, okay? synonymously. So, we, we always like we sometimes say a sub representation, sub module, okay? all these are like synonyms, okay? so they, they can be interchanged not a problem. Okay, so, now we are ready to define what is called uh, sub representations and then we will also show you like how to construct some new representations of from old representation and so on. Again the module language will be better in the for, uh, for this. Okay. So, maybe uh, we can also uh, okay, let us use module language, okay. let us not to worry about it. So, you start with the Lie algebra. And let us say V is V is also G module. Okay. So, that means there is a action of G on capital V that is all important. Okay. That action actually obeys the Lie algebra uh, structure on G. So, now what is a sub module? Okay. So, here is the definition. A submodule W of V is a subspace, first of all, such that whenever you take X and then whenever you take V, okay, X from G and then V from W, then if you compute uh, the action of X on V, so that should be inside W this should be true for all x in g and v in w. So, in particularly 
we have this uh, module map from g cross v to v ok let us call it sigma we can restrict this sigma to g cross w ok which is a map from g cross w to w. So, so this is actually going to give you again module structure on w. So, w becomes g module with respect to this c restricted to g cross w. So, same action you restricted to w that is going to give you module structure on the w. So, that is what sub module means. So, that is naturally defined. Okay. So, here is the another definition what is called irreducible module. Okay. So, once we have defined what is called sub modules then it is easy to define what is irreducible module. Okay. So, a yeah, g module v is said to be irreducible if v contains no proper non-zero sub module. Okay. So, that means, if w is a g sub module, then that should imply either w is 0 or entire v. Okay. So, it is actually <coughs> does not contain any other proper non-zero sub modules other than like 0 and v. So, these are all the only sub modules. So, 0 uh, is being a subspace you one can easily check it is a sub module v to begin with is a module. So, it is also a sub module. Okay. So, both are called a trivial sub modules. So, in some sense v does not contain any non-trivial sub module. So, like in all algebraic categories you can also define uh, this uh, direct sum of these uh, g modules. So, if you start with v 1, v 2 both are g modules then we can construct v 1 direct sum v 2. So, that is the tuples v 1, v 2 such that v 1 is coming from v 1 and v 2 is coming from v 2. So, then we define the action of g on this v 1 direct sum v 2 using the action on v 1 and v 2. So, you take x and then acting on v 1 v 2. So, it just to make it act on the coordinates x dot v 1 comma x dot v 2. Okay. So, this is true for all x in g and v 1 in v 1 and v 2 in v 2. So, this actually gives you action and that makes this v 1 direct sum v 2 as a g module. So, that is something uh, I will leave it to you to check. So, check this star actually gives you uh, g module structure on v 1 direct sum v 2. Okay. So, whenever we write v 1 direct sum v 2, so in this uh, category of representations or whenever we refer g modules, okay, we always assume this v 1 direct sum v 2 as g module with respect to this particular structure. Okay. Sometimes uh, you can take this Cartesian product there will be some other actually structure of g module on this, but whenever we write uh, v 1 direct sum v 2 we always refer to this. Okay. So, now uh, let us uh, look at uh, some important uh, results about uh, this five dimensional modules. Okay. So, you, you may ask actually uh, the following question what we really do in representation theory. Okay. Indeed what we are trying to do 
So, you have a family of operators acting on some space. Okay. So, all these algebraic objects okay, either group, ring, algebra or Lie algebra all of them arise naturally by acting on some space. Okay. So, we are interested in understanding how these elements of this uh, algebraic object acts on that space. Okay. So, why we are interested in something like that uh, sometimes by understanding the action of this algebraic object on this uh, vector space given vector space we will be able to actually get lots of informative information about the structure of that algebraic object. So, not only that uh, sometimes it also help us to prove something interesting about uh, uh, like that space and uh, using the action some combinatorial results also we can prove we will see later. But purely from the algebra point of view we are interested in understanding uh, for example, the structure of the given algebraic object. So, that structure actually can be like the many information about the structure can be obtained from its action on some non trivial space. Okay. So, how one actually really understand the structure. Okay. So, maybe let us let us actually uh, so for that we need to see some examples. Uh, but anyway like uh, we will see some examples later when I do SL2 theory and uh, other things okay. even uh, the theory of uh, this uh, semi simple Lie algebra is one application of how to use representations in order to understand the structure of uh, algebras. Okay. But anyway let us now uh, see like uh, some general facts about representations. So, <coughs> we can define what is called indecomposable representations. So, what they are? So, you say okay, your representation V. Okay. So, let, let me use module, module language let us not uh, mix it. <coughs> so, we call indecomposable let us say G module. So, a G module V is said to be in decomposable if V cannot be cannot be written as direct sum of two non trivial okay that is non zero g modules okay so trivial g module means it is just a zero space okay if you talk start with zero space there is a trivial action of g on that that we call it trivial space. If V cannot be written as direct sum of two non trivial G model then we call it V is indecomposable. So, what this means in case you write V as V 1 direct sum V 2 as G modules. Okay. So, that means is isomorphic to V 1 direct sum V 2. So, then we should get either V 1 is 0 or V2 is 0. Okay. So, or V1 is isomorphic to 0 or V2 is isomorphic to 0. So, why this notion of indecomposable is actually important? So, if you are interested in understanding G modules, okay, so especially in the finite dimensional category, you can see that any finite dimensional G module can be written as direct sum of indecomposable G modules. Okay, this is just follows from uh, induction on the dimension. Okay, let's let's prove this. So this is very important observation. Let's say V is finite dimensional G module. Okay, then claim is V can be written as direct sum of indecomposable G modules. So how one does that? 
So, if V is one dimensional then there is nothing to prove. To begin with V is indecomposable then we do not need to worry. Okay. If V is indecomposable, so then we are done. Okay. Otherwise what will happen? Otherwise V has to be written as V1 direct sum V2 because V being decomposable with V1 being non-zero and V2 being non-zero. So, that means dimension of V1 and dimension of V2 both are actually smaller than dimension of V. So, this tells us that now using induction we can write V1 as direct sum of indecomposable modules, V2 as direct sum of indecomposable modules. So, that says V can be written as direct sum of direct sum of indecomposable modules. So, this is actually a very very important observation. Okay. For example, <coughs> you can say that if you are interested in understanding any G module, then uh, this observation immediately tells you that uh, it is enough to understand first of all what are all the indecomposable modules because any other module can be uh, can be achieved or can be obtained from this direct sum of indecomposable modules okay so if you think about it okay this is actually very very important thing in representation theory to determine what are all the indecomposable modules so let me give one example and then stop suppose if you have this one dimensional space okay so this is let's say acting on this vector space v okay so i can think this as abelian lie algebra there is no issue so this x is acting on v so now what we are interested in we are interested in actually how this x acts on v and then uh, from all, from the for example like a computational point of view one is interested in understanding like uh, how to compute for example, the trace of x, determinant of x and so on. So, for which uh, we need to actually get a basis B of V such that the matrix of x with respect to B should look uh, really nice. Okay. So, this should really look nice. So, in order to achieve this Okay. So, for example, Jordan canonical form. So, that is actually giving you some basis. So, with respect to that basis, uh, the matrix of this x looks uh, like upper triangular matrix. So, not only just it is an upper triangular matrix, it is a upper triangle, it is an upper triangular matrix that has if you see from computational point of view, large number of zeros in it. Okay. So, you are interested in finding out such a basis. So, for which how are you going to find out such a basis? So, you want to write V as first of all sum of or direct sum of x invariant subspaces. Okay. So, if you write V as direct sum of x invariant subspaces that helps you to actually produce a basis and then <coughs> that basis actually obtained from putting together the basis of each individual x invariant subspace. So, that the matrix of that x with respect to that basis will look really nice. For example, it will look like a block diagonal, block diagonal already has lots of zeros in it. Okay. But the thing is you want to actually kind of refine this further and further and then you want to get like a maximal direct sum of x invariant subspaces. Okay. You do not want to get just to get the sum, sum of x invariant subspaces. You want to get like a maximal possible. So, the maximum possible obtained from this uh, writing this V as direct sum of indecomposable x invariant subspaces. Okay. Basically cyclic decomposition theorem says 
that uh, V can be written as direct sum of cyclic subspaces. So, that implies that if you think about it, so these indecomposable x invariant subspaces are nothing but cyclic subspaces. Okay. So, you can say that uh, the entire this Jordan canonical form, finding Jordan canonical form or rational canonical form, everything fits into like uh, understanding this dim uh, like representation of this one dimensional Lie algebra C x. Okay. So, so to understand the representation theory, first one should understand the representation theory of this one dimensional uh, algebra okay, and then you can actually go to two dimensional and then see what happens and so on. Okay. So, basically the representation theory of this one dimensional over complex numbers is, is basically equivalent to finding Jordan canonical form. Okay. So, you can see how powerful is the representation theory. Okay. With that comment I will stop now, okay. we will continue uh, later uh, in the next class. Uh, uh, with the further like uh, terminologies in representation theory like homomorphisms, quotients and some uh, isomorphism theorems. Okay. I will stop now. Thank you.